Good evening, councillors and members of the public. And before we commence the meeting, I would like to draw your attention to the fire regulations which are on the screen behind me. And um, there is no planned evacuation for this evening. If the fire alarm should go off, then the meeting point will be beneath the canopy outside Waitrose. Just follow me anyway. And uh, also, please, can you ensure that your mobile phones are switched to silent because we are being webcast and um, we don't want that sort of interruption. Make sure that your cards are pushed in um, firmly. Um, the minutes of the meeting which took place on the 10th of June have been laid on the table for the last 30 minutes. Are you content that I sign these as a correct record of that meeting? Thank you. Have there been any apologies for absence, Fiona? Thank you, Chairman. I've had apologies from councillors Anna James, Peter Martin, Tom Martin, Stephen Reynolds and Simon Thornton. Thank you. And have any members declared interest before the meeting? No, none received. Do members have any other non-pecuniary or disclosable pecuniary interest to declare? None. Thank you. Um, now we're going to have a presentation on... Oh. Mm. Oh, have we any have we any questions from members of the uh, the public? Uh, no, none received, Chairman. Thank you. Um, and now, are there any are there any re relevant updates to government guidance or legislation since the last meeting that we should be aware of? There are none in relation to the items on this agenda. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Now we move on to applications for planning permission, and we. Move on to item B1, WA2015, Oblique 0741, One Step Cottage, Church Lane, Whitley, GU8, 5pm. Right. Um, Catherine, I think you're going to give us a presentation. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The application site is located at the junction of Church Lane with Petworth Road. Uh, just to give you a, an orientation, the White Hart Public House is opposite that Mr. junction. <clears throat> the main dwelling on site, Step Cottage, is a Grade 2 listed building. The site is within the rural settlement boundary, wherein the pr principle of development is acceptable. However, the green belt does wash over the settlement. Whilst policy RD2 does not apply, or indeed the 40% guidance, the test of proportionality is applicable. The application is for a single story extension. The extension would take the form of a traditional um, barn along the road frontage there and it would follow the corner of the site. It would have an overall length of 16 metres and would provide um, ancillary annex accommodation. These are the elevational plans of the extension. This is obviously the elevation that turns the corner there at the junction with Church Lane. As you can see, it is proposed to take the form of a traditional vernacular um, black barn. I'll just take you through some photographs just so as you can um, contextualise the proposals. This is a view of, of that junction, um, so that way is north heading towards Godalming. The extension would be sited here. This is Step Cottage here, which is the listed building to which it would be attached. The extension would be sited behind this hedging and vegetation. This is a, a photo montage which has been submitted by the applicant's agent, um, just showing the, the top of the barn there. Again, a, a slightly different angle looking straight on at the 
at the site. So the junction with Church Lane here, the Petworth Road here, and obviously the side elevation of Step Cottage here with the listed church in the background. This is just a photograph looking in the opposite direction towards that junction. So you have Step Cottage here and the barn would turn the corner here. Before we go through the determining issues, if I can just draw your attention to the printed update sheet. There is an amendment to the reasons for condition, just deleting reference to the um, former draft local development framework. And there are two additional informatives to note in relation to the conditions proposed. With regards to the matters of principle, members are being asked to consider the principle of development and the effect upon SPAs. You are being asked to exercise your judgment with regards to the impact on the green belt and compliance with policy RD1, the impact on the visual amenities of the area, the site is also within a conservation area, the impact of the development upon the character and setting of Step Cottage, which is a listed building, and the impact on residential amenity. Officers are supportive of this application and the recommendation is therefore that subject to conditions 1 to 4 and informatives 1 to 3 in the agenda and detailed on the update sheet that permission be granted. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Catherine. Members, over to you. Councillor Holder. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. <coughs> When one considers uh, iconic buildings in Waverley, one might think of the Pepper Cot in Godalming, or the old town hall at the head of the High Street in Hazelmere, or perhaps even the William Cobbett pub in Farnham, where William Cobbett was born. However, as far as they are linked to the historic framework of the borough of Waverley is concerned, they pale into insignificance when compared with the heart of the Whit Whitley Conservation Area. This area, approximately 250 yards by 250 yards, consists of four buildings. All Saints Church, which was built in 1054, 12 years before the Battle of Hastings. The White Hart Public House, which as a hostelry was visited regularly by King Richard II in the early 1300s. And two small artisan cottages between the two, Church, Step Cottage and Step Cottage, both built during the reign of King Henry VIII. Both Church Step Cottage and Step Cottage have had minor alterations during the succeeding 500 years since they were built. But it wasn't until 2004 that Church Step Cottage applied to build an extension. The application was refused, being contrary to policies RD1, D1 and D4 of the Waverley Local Plan, insofar as it was detrimental to the scale and character of the existing dwelling and the character of the area. A subsequent application on a smaller scale was submitted the following year in 2005 and approved. Following this successful application, the owner of the adjoining property, Step Cottage, the applicant for this current application applied for a similar size extension to his property in 2008, and this was also approved. A subsequent application for a separate dwelling in the Garden of Step Cottage made in 2013 was refused on, approval by the, on appeal by the inspector for the following reasons. One, although the upper part of the proposed dwelling would be visible, the built form would in intrude into these important public views. I accept that the church spa would not be obscured by these views, but the presence of even the limited part of the proposed dwelling in the foregoing would harm the setting of the church. In conclusion, I conclude that the proposed development would harm the setting of adjacent listed buildings. I therefore conclude that the proposed development would be contrary to policy HE3 of the Waverley Borough Local Plan 2002, which requires, amongst other things, that proposals will not be permitted if they would harm the setting of a listed building. 
This application, Madam Chairman, is exactly the same as the previous application. I further assert that this application is contrary to policy RD. This is the inspector continuing. I further assert that this application is contrary to policy RD1 of the Waverley Local Plan in that the extension or alteration of a building provided it does not result in disproportionate additions over and above the size of the original building. Uh, you will see that listed on page 1314, I think, of the uh, application. It's the um, <coughs> second, second paragraph down. I argue that the original building is that which existed between 1530 and 2008. <coughs> and if you look at the, the initial on page five, the drawings on page five, you'll see that the step cottage has been extended, and I refer to the little bit that before it was extended as the original building. <coughs> as this also, this proposal would, by virtue of its unsatisfactory relationship, be detrimental to the scale and character of the existing dwelling, as I say, this original one, <coughs> and character of the Air Force, and therefore contrary not only to policy RD1, but also to D1 and D4 of the Waverley Local Plan. <coughs> Finally, Madam Chairman, uh, as the uh, historic environment champion for Waverley, uh, I work closely with Historic England. We, we do try and help owners of listed two buildings to do their extensions, but they must conform with the existing building. And as I say at the back, historic buildings are irreplaceable. They give us our sense of place and contribute to our quality of life. These precious buildings need to be looked after for future generations, and we know how challenging that can be. This application <coughs> is totally unproportionate to the existing building and should be refused. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Holder. Any other comments? Councillor Els. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, from a design point of view, I, I think that what they've proposed is a fairly, it's an accepted architectural solution to extending listed buildings. It, it takes the form of um, an outhouse that probably would have existed on some of these listed cottages before they were gentrified and such outbuildings would have been demolished um, to give them more garden room. But I do think that this proposal is, is far too long. It's um, 16 metres, that's over... 50 feet long and I'm slightly puzzled because Waverley's uh, residential extension SPD when it talks about annexes which is how this is defined in the application documents <coughs> it says in order to ensure that the proposal is truly an annex um, it is expected that access to the annex would be internally through the main house which this is um, facilities are shared but the plans attached to this application show that it has its own kitchen and its own bathroom so it's totally self-contained so by simply blocking up one door you've got a, a separate dwelling um, and uh, for that reason I'm, I'm a bit concerned about the application thank you for that any other comments or observations members Oh. Madam Count Chairman, Councillor Upton. I have a problem with uh, the ascetic view. Uh, the the uh, proposal has been hidden by an existing hedge. But what will be exposed if that hedge diseased or other problems with that vegetation came forth? And that would be standing out as a signpost to that junction, as far as I can see it. Um, at the moment, it doesn't look a great inclusion, but... I fear with uh, vegetation as it goes on through the years, it could cause a problem. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I've had the benefit of uh, visiting yesterday and uh, looking around the um, exterior of the site um, including a walk up to the church and um, looking down from the uh, cemetery area. Um, I'm sure we've all taken a very careful look 
at the officer's report, which um, I find um, well presented. But I'm always disturbed when there's clearly um, a large strength of um, anti-feeling. Now, because this does affect um, local people, and although there are not too many um, objections, um, I think that our colleagues in the parish council um, made some clear statements. Although I personally have um, a problem with, um, for example, a couple of them, um, we use the language inappropriate development. Well, what exactly is inappropriate? I'm not sort of learning anything from that particular statement. Damaging impact on the setting of a listed building. Again, I'm learning nothing as to exactly what the nature of that damaging impact. I can't agree with the statement that it's overdevelopment of the plot simply because on page five, which was the first uh, location plan shown, um, the building shown there um, certainly doesn't appear to me to be overdevelopment and certainly hasn't the characteristics of the overdevelopments that have been presented to this committee in the past. Um, and there's another statement, disproportionate to the existing building. Again, from my perspective, I, I, I can't really see that. However, Councillor Else has just pointed out that so easily this particular extension could um, be made into a self-contained dwelling. And um, that, I don't believe, is acceptable. And also, from my perspective, um, there's a statement here that refers to the design having the nature of a barn. Well, barns, for me, are associated with agricultural land. And if agricultural land is no longer used for agriculture, then fine. People can move into them and modify them and so on. But it just doesn't sit right from a visual amenity point of view that this design has those characteristics. There might be some common elements with the existing materials, but I'm very uncomfortable about that. Um, the site visit did enable me, and in conjunction with the plans to um, consider what the impact um, of the, the impact um, on seeing the church spire, which has actually been improved by the applicants um, having taken down that enormous um, oak tree, which obviously developed over the years. So that if, if the committee was minded to um, grant this uh, this particular uh, application, I feel that there must be another condition imposed, which would be to maintain um, the nature of that screening, because it certainly cuts out um, any of the, the build and only part of the roof line. Now, obviously, plants grow and so on, and some will die off, but it's the nature of the screening that I think is important and contributes hugely to this lovely setting and so that's what I would certainly like. So I haven't yet made up my, my mind but um, because uh, well <laughs> because I'm still a little bit open to uh, any other suggestions but the thing that has um, been added to my thought process is certainly this aspect that the building as designed uh, could so easily become a separate unit and of course that previous application which was rejected and then rejected on appeal was a, a quite separate uh, building and I could see then that that, that was um, contrary to the nature of the whole area. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Lee. Of officers did you want to respond? I Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, just to come back on a couple of points that you've raised there, Councillor Lee. Um, if, if it is a concern of yours regarding um, the screening along that, that boundary, um, you could choose to impose a landscaping condition to include retention of that boundary screening, if that is a concern, retention and maintenance of, of that, that screening. Um, and if you would like to specify 
a height to which that should be maintained. Um, that could be, be worded into that as well. Um, with regards to the concerns uh, regarding occupation of that extension, I would draw your attention to condition four recommended, um, which obviously restricts what that extension can lawfully be used for. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Catherine. Councillor Wheatley. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I've just been catching up on our agenda for the council meeting next Tuesday, and I note a very detailed report for the conservation area for Whitley, which includes this. And I am worried that the, if we were to pass this, that would sort of already go against the idea of having a conservation area. So I find this very confusing. Thank you, Councillor Wheatley. Councillor Holder. Thank you for allowing me to come back, Madam Chair. Um, can I just ask the officers, is there a non-material amendment connected with this application? Uh, no, there isn't. Sorry, Chairman, just to add to that, of course, a non-material amendment would normally be a form of application that would follow the grant of a permission. So I wonder, did, did, did you mean had there been any amendments to the current scheme? Because, because the non-material amendment would not be submitted while the application is current. It tends to follow the grant of a planning permission, if that's clear. Thank yeah. The, my, my question is the non-material amendment, I think, is for windows on the other side of this dwelling, which would indicate that the applicant has intention to cut down the shrubbery. Sorry, Madam Chairman, I, I can't see any evidence of a, an NMA, and there's nothing referenced on the file. Thank you. And, and Councillor Holder, I understand from your response that you think there probably has been a recently submitted one, but in relation to a different part of the site, of the different part of the building. Is that, is that the case? I was informed by the officer, um, Douglas Wright, that the, a non-material amendment had been submitted. I think that, if that is the case, that it, I'm afraid it hasn't been brought to our attention, so we're not able to confirm it one way or the other. But I'm um, happy to accept what you're saying, because that may be the case. But I don't think it, from my viewpoint, would necessarily affect the merits of what we're saying here. Um, thank you, Chairman. Did you want to say anything else, Councillor Holder, on that matter? Uh, no, Madam Chairman. Are there any more comments from members? Councillor Else. Yes, if I could just come on to, uh, it was just mentioned that condition number four, that um, the annex hereby permitted shall be used for purposes incidental to the residential occupation. Well, a condition like that is incredibly hard to police um, and, unless you've got the neighbours spying on them all the time. And that, I, I would imagine, is why the SPD talks about having shared facilities so that creating a separate dwelling is more difficult. And um, the SPD specifically says about sharing either a kitchen or a bathroom. And uh, this has got both. Thank you. Thank you. So, are there no more comments? Are we ready to um, move on to the recommendation? Yes, thank you, Fiona. Um, so, uh, Councillor Lee suggested an extra condition. Um, so we need to decide now um, whether that's what we would like to impose upon this application uh, if we agree uh, with, with the officer's decision. So I think a show of hands. Pardon? Uh, yes. Uh, so 
Councillor Lee's proposed we need a seconder for for this additional condition and we need to do this before we move on to vote on the recommendation. Councillor Holder, did you wish to say something? I wanted to say that I, I think it's going to be very difficult to impose a condition on vegetation. I mean, what's stopping the vegetation all dying? Would it be replaced? I mean, I, I think that's very difficult. Go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. That's a very good question, Councillor Holder. Just to clarify that, it's a very conventional type of condition, but it would contain a caveat that in the event of the approved landscaping dying, that that would be replaced um, with similar to ensure a, 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 an ongoing landscaping scheme to have the same screening effect within a period of, of five years normally. So that, that is the cover for the concern that you're, you're raising. But it is a very normal, conventional type of condition to impose where you have landscaping concerns. Thank you, Chairman. So therefore, may I have a show of hands, please? <sighs> or, no, I need, I need the proposal, sorry. The proposal from Dennis and a seconder. Uh, yes. Yes, Councilor. I would like to propose um, that that screening is um, maintained and uh, to something like the current height, which I don't know exactly, but it's probably three, two to three metres, something like that. And it must be natural. This is if we approve the... Yes, that's right. Um, do we have a seconder? Councillor Ells. Elizabeth, did you want to say something? Uh, only, Chairman, that um, the, the landscaping decision, I think we would, if you do approve it and wish to impose this, that uh, we, we, the wording we would choose would be for the details of the screening to be agreed by the officers. So we take into account the advice of our arboricultural team in terms of confirming that the details were an acceptable scheme on your behalf to ensure it was a viable landscaping scheme. Thank you, Chairman. So now I think we need to vote on imposing a fifth condition to this application. Can I have a show of hands, please, in support of imposing a fifth condition? We haven't voted yet on whether we accept the officer's recommendation, but we need to complete the conditions so that we know what we're voting on in a moment. So, uh, that's five in, in agreement to potentially adding this condition to an approval if you are minded to approve. And those against? So that is carried then. Um, we now have to um, decide on the revised recommendation as set out on page 20 of the report that permission be granted subject to conditions 1 to 5. And I think that it, as it's a standard condition, we can leave the wording as long as we're happy to, to do that uh, regarding the vegetation. So granted subject to conditions 1 to 5 set out on pages 20 and 21 of the agenda and the three informatives in the agenda on the updates report. May I have those in favour of the recommendation to grant permission? And those against? So that's eight against the recommendation to grant. Thank you, members. So the application is refused. But sorry, now we need to go on. Yes, so, yes, quite right. We have to now vote uh, or decide um, that if we are to refuse, on what grounds we're going to refuse. So um, does anybody have anything that, to put forward? Now, Councillor Holder. <coughs> well, I, I think the inspector adequately uh, interpreted it, uh, the original application. I think it's exactly the same. I can hand over to Elizabeth the appeal uh, decision on the original thing, which I think covers it.
Chairman, we've um, scanned the appeal decision that, that Council Holders passed over, and I think, and based on some of the concerns coming from members, we could suggest some wording around that, which I'll ask Catherine um, to read out now and suggest to members, if you're happy. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, officers would suggest wording along the lines of the proposal by reason of its sighting, design and appearance would fail to preserve or enhance the character and appearance of the listed building and the conservation area and would cause less than substantial harm to the significance of these designated heritage assets. The less than substantial harm is considered to outweigh the benefits of the proposal. <laughs> The proposal would therefore conflict with paragraphs 129 to 134 of the MPPF and policies HE3, HE5 and HE8 of the Waverley Borough Local Plan 2002. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Catherine. And now we need to have a show of hands for those who accept that this application is refused on that basis with those conditions and no, we're not worried about conditions, are we? Just on that basis, if we're happy with that. That's unanimous. Um, eight in favour of refusing on those re for those reasons. Thank you. So permission is refused. Thank you. So moving on to the next application, item B2, WA 20150523, erection of building to provide retail unit to ground floor and an office at first floor level and detached garage. This follows an invalid application, WA 20142329, at plot 5, former AJ Tracy Yard, the Green Elsted GU86DA. William, would you like to introduce the application, please? Oh, sorry, Elizabeth. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, members, I'd, I'd just like to start on this one tonight and unusually take you to your update sheet first, please, this evening. Um, officers have taken the fairly unusual step um, of actually altering our recommendation on this application. And I apologize in advance for that. We don't like to do that. We like to give members full information and be clear about recommendations. And of course, that is the norm. But on this particular occasion, we felt that um, the circumstances have warranted a change in our approach. So just to talk to the update sheet first, and I'll pass over to William to take you through the, the plans um, in more detail. And of course, I think most members would have visited the site earlier this week, so we'll be familiar with the circumstances. Um, in the middle of the update sheet, we do um, update you on further letters of objection that have been received. I'm sure you've had the chance to read that and take those comments into account. Um, but critically, um, the first few paragraphs of the update sheet do explain why we have altered our point of view on this application. Now, this site does have a fairly complex history, but put as clearly and simply as I, I can do, um, there has been an ongoing expectation that this site would maintain an element of commercial use upon it. And that has been a requirement by the council, uh, supported by an inspector's decision, that the redevelopment of the site would include an ongoing retail stroke commercial element. Um, the building that is subject to the current application has been submitted on the face of it as an amendment to a previous scheme um, and um, has been argued to be a, an office stroke retail unit, but it has come to officers' attention following the site visit on Monday, a very recent inspection of the exterior and the internal layout and the plans that in fact um, this is not an appropriate office stroke retail environment. And for us to maintain um, a requirement on this, if permission is granted, that it be promoted and retained as an office stroke retail unit would in fact be unreasonable because it is not equipped or laid out or constructed for that particular purpose. Um, it does have a very clear domesticated use and character and that may be, without uh, reading too much into it, may be the long-term expectation and aspiration for the building. I don't know that. All I can follow through is that the proposal on the face of it is for 
a commercial use, and we do not feel that giving our preference to retain some commercial use on the site, that that expectation has been met, because what we're looking for is the retention of a commercial space at this point in time. So I hope that's explained the background. We do feel, given those circumstances and our recent experience of having visited the site, that the right recommendation for this particular set of plans and proposal is, is refusal based on the principle of the loss of commercial use. You'll see from the officer's report that from other viewpoints, we're happy with the proposal. So this is the one objection that we do have. But at that point, I'll ask William to take you through the plans and happy to take any further questions later. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you, Chairman. Okay, so this is the site in question. So we're in the uh, centre of Elstead. We've got the village green here. Uh, we've got the main Farnham Road situated towards the towards the southwest. And the site itself is is a recent, well, a, a number of years ago, it was permitted, it was granted permission um, for a number of residential units plus uh, the office and retail unit as such, which is located just here. And again, this is just another site location plan serving the context of within Elstead itself. Um, again, the block plan showing the um, description of the site. So we have the, the unit here. We have um, garden space situated towards the rear, uh, along with uh, parking, um, two parking spaces situated towards the front, and um, this, this detached garage, which I'll come on to in a, in a second, which is part of the proposed works. Uh, situated just in the corner of the site. That's of a single bay um, detached garage. Um, essentially, as Elizabeth mentioned, the permission was originally granted in 2008, uh, outline planning permission for uh, four units plus this unit in particular for office and retail space. So as we can see from the plans, we have originally consented a uh, scheme of office parking towards the front retail parking towards the side and the, the unit itself with retail use situated at ground floor level and office space situated at first floor level as such. And uh, we can, this, is, this is obviously the siting of the new uh, 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 director garage as well. Um, as we can see from the consented scheme, so 2008 was the original outline permission followed by the uh, reserve matters application in 2012. As we can see from the consented schemes, the, um, the, the, the building um, had uh, large sort of ground floor uh, four pane windows, um, along with also a um, separate door access towards the side of the building, which provided a separate internal access to the, um, um, the, the consented office space at first floor level. And this is um, what is being proposed now as part of the scheme. So the, the dwelling itself is, is um, to be located um, an additional two metres away from the um, neighbouring property of Greenhive. So I've just quickly show neighbours, um, sorry, a member, sorry, the neighbouring property. This is Greenhive here. And, they've want, and it is proposed to move the dwelling two metres. Sorry, it, 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 has, actually, it has actually been done. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, the office, office, sorry, did I think anything? Sorry. So, sorry, big pardon, I meant to say office, sorry. <laughs> and um, so two metres away from the, from the boundary of the um, neighbouring property, uh, Green Hive. So away from the boundary, two metres towards the east. Um, as well as that, there's a number of external alterations, which consist of um, a new ground floor, a, a smaller ground floor window, a number of new doors to the rear elevation, and a new first floor um, hallway uh, window. Um, so yes, those, those uh, yeah. So just just um, primarily full fenestration details, and obviously we've got the garage itself, which is just the, the 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 sort of block plan and the elevations of the garage situated to the side of the building. And these pictures uh, are recent pictures of the the proper uh, of, of the uh, of the building. Um, so we have, as I say. Um, the, the window at the front, which as I say, they want to increase in size, again with the window here as well, um, with, off, with the office, um, the parking spaces towards the front and the side just around here. And this is the name property of Greenhive. Uh, again, we've got the, the front of the property. Um, again, another side view. And 
Yeah, okay. So I'll now pass you uh, back to Elizabeth, who will guide members through the determining issues of the application and in particular the issues of, of loss of the blind land um, um, as part of the part of the scheme. So, yeah. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I think it's fairly self-explanatory from the list of issues that, that what we're talking about is, is really the main objections I said at the beginning of the presentation, that whereas um, we had indicated in the report before we originally were happy with the principle of development, we're now saying that the principle of development is not acceptable, not because it's not shown as an office, because it clearly is, but what is actually being um, proposed and has been constructed and is laid out is technically not suitable for office accommodation. And that then takes us back to an objection in principle that what we're doing is losing commercial space upon the site. So upon all other matters, which William will display the list of issues again, um, we are actually happy with the proposal. In physical terms, we think it is acceptable, in terms it doesn't actually cause harm to the character of the conservation areas or the um, adjoining settlement area, but that in terms of the principal development, um, we do now find there to be an objection. So I th hope that's helpful to members. The matters of judgment, of course, are on the right-hand side and the matters of technical opinion, as ever, on the left-hand side. Um, I, I think to conclude, I'll take you to the update sheet, back to the update sheet, where the revised recommendation then is to refuse upon the basis of um, the reason I've described and the new reason for refusal is set out there. Um, thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Elizabeth. And um, members, Councillor Wheatley. Thank you very much, Chairman. I must say I was very relieved to get that update sheet. Nowhere in the agenda does it suggest that this building's already built and that actually they have completely gone against the instructions that were agreed in 2008. Even shifting the building two metres um, there, there is a very suspect new base next door. We don't know whether they're planning to build an extension, but um, who knows? Upstairs, airing cupboards, um, immersion heaters. It's a set of bedrooms. Nowhere is it um, office accommodation. And it looks to me as though someone's literally just thumbing their nose at the planning authority, and I think it's about time somebody learned this is not acceptable. And I'm very pleased that the... Uh, the officers have decided to recommend refusal because I certainly go along with that. Thank you very much. Councillor Ells. Thank you, Chairman. It's also worth noting that um, an application was submitted to replace the shop and office with a dwelling. And the plans, apart from one window pane on the front, were exactly the same as what has been built. Um, I, I think we... I like to apply the duck test. If it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, it most probably is a duck. And if you take a building that's a shop that's very similar to a living room with a fireplace and French doors, it's got offices that are bedroom sized with a bathroom, an ensuite, an airing cupboard, then it most probably is a dwelling. Um, I'm glad that attention has been drawn to the fact that it's built two metres to the east of its approved position um, and somebody mentioned that perhaps there was a slab next door well I understand that there is an application but that's not for us to consider this evening but there is an application in to extend the house next door which very conveniently now has two meters more um, there was there's talk in the submission about piling and ground conditions but uh, that obviously doesn't worry the house next door who want to build an extension and also in there um, details they do talk about the boundary wall has already been piled so the piles have been the cost of the piles has been met somehow um, yes and, and also of course the garage um, when this was first approved as a development that as we saw in the plan earlier the shop and offices were allocated four spaces well that garage has been built at an odd angle to um, covers sort of half a, or one of the spaces and the rest of it seems to have been allocated to the house that was built next door so how we could ever 
get two spaces in there, I don't know. Um, but anyway, should my colleagues agree with the officer's recommendation and refuse permission, could officers please confirm that enforcement would follow to reconfigure the internal layout and the fenestration as shops uh, or as, as shop and offices and also to demolish the garage and reinstate the planning, uh, the parking spaces? We can actually serve an enforcement notice requiring them to take whatever steps it is that the committee wants them to take. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Upton. Yes, um, mine's a more basic question. If it is two metres further from the original planning, how did that evolve? I've been involved with buildings to... Uh, with planning applications, and they have to be built to the drawings to the inspectors that inspect the site. So I'd often wonder, I'm now wondering how that facility, for it to be able to be two metres away to the wall, actually occurred if it was inspected originally by our building inspectors. Elizabeth. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, it's a tricky one because um, not all... Um, applications for building regulations consent go through our own building inspection team anyway. They can seek approval from approved inspectors. So we don't always, as a council, have control in any event over the building regulations situation. But in any event, they operate quite separately from planning. They're not there actually to police um, compliance with planning permission. Um, we do work with them as far as possible, but we have to rely on planning applicants if they get a grant of planning permission to take the responsibility to build out their plans correctly and responsibly and that is one of the underlying principles of, of the planning act however there is an enforcement function available to the council to respond and as ever with any enforcement situation if it's brought to our attention that there is a possible breach we then respond to that investigate it and we have to understand not just is it a breach we also have to understand is it a harmful breach? Is it actually causing some sort of planning conflict, either, as in this instance, um, a tension with policy, or is it actually causing physical conflict in the sense of creating harm to, to amenities of neighbours, for example? So there's a bit of a, an assessment process in there before we actually get to the point of saying we're going to stop them actually carrying out the work. It's probably not as strong a system as some people would like it to be, but it is the one that we have in Britain, and, and we have to... Um, apply responsibly so that's how that's how we come to this position thank you thank you Elizabeth you want to come back Councillor thank you Madam Upton. Chairman I'll bear that in future when I come across other building inspectors <laughs> thank you any other Councillor Holder uh, thank you Madam Chairman uh, many years ago I used to go to AJ Tracy in Elstead to buy um, nuts, bolts, or hammers, anything to do with the building trade because it was much cheaper than going into Dewson's in Godalming. And I was sad when Tra AJ Tracy uh, went into liquidation and then I heard that in fact they were going to have a shop selling exactly what they had before. Uh, and uh, so to, to go around the other day and see this on the site visit that it had no intention of replacing what AJ Tracy used to do I think was very sad and uh, I will be agreeing with the officer's recommendation that this application should be refused. Thank you. Any other comments or observations, members? So we move on then to um, uh, the revised recommendation. We, we have to move on to the revised recommendation which is that permission be refused for the reason set out in the update report. May I have those in favour of the recommendation to refuse, please? That's unanimous. Thank you, members. Permission is refused, and I think that concludes the business of the evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>